Good afternoon, and thank you all for coming. Um, in case you don't know, I'm Charlie Farrington, the Managing Director of the ERA. And on my right is uh, Mr. Louis Boucher, who is my deputy. I'd first of all like to apologize for the absence of the chairwoman of the ERA, um, Mrs. Sherry Barton Cowan. She would have liked to have been here, but uh, she, unfortunately she's off island. And we had planned to have her deputy, Mr. Derek Tibbetts, with us to actually make the announcement on the result of the solicitation, but at the last minute he was uh, pulled away due to work requirements. So unfortunately you're, you're stuck with just Louis and I. So the, the plan is that uh, we had intended for a member of the board to read the result, but instead Louis will read it for them, and then he'll hand back to me, and I will give you a summary of the process that we went through and a few additional comments. So with that, I'll hand over to you, Louis. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you for, for joining us. Uh, dear members of the media, citizens, and res residents of the Cayman Islands, the Electricity Regulatory Authority has determined that the bid submitted by Caribbean Utilities Company, CUC, to supply Grand Cayman with new power is best for consumers. The entire bidding process was open and competitive, and all bid parameters were clearly outlined in the request for proposals for the project. The ERA carefully scrutinized all bids with the assistance of consulting firm ICF International we evaluated all bids in accordance with the criteria set out in the RFP, and CUC provided the best solution. CUC scored highest in both the price aspect of the competition for the lowest cost per kilowatt hour, and had the highest total points in other areas, such as environmental impact, fuel and equipment supply plans, financing, construction, and operating plans although CUC was not the highest scorer in all other areas. Excuse me, in all areas. While the lowest total price was the most important aspect of the evaluation, the non-price factors demonstrated the strength of the bids in other areas. The end result of the solicitation process is that it represents the competition and generation that was, the obje that was one of the objectives of the new CUC licenses. Since this generation is scheduled to provide power for 25 years and the price, other than fuel, is substantially fixed for the period from the outset, this result, this result represents the benefits of competition and generation to consumers. CUC offered the most fuel efficient solution and the lowest non-fuel costs by a significant margin. At the same time, without the competition provided by Dart Enterprises Real Estate, and the Lewis Burger Group, consumers may not have gotten the benefit of such an economic firm power solution. As CUC cannot sign a power purchase agreement, a PPA, with itself, to bind it to the terms offered, the ERA will regulate CUC to ensure that consumers receive the benefits of this winning bid. Specific provisions were written into CUC's licenses in 2008 to accomplish this. On behalf of the ERA board, we would like to take this opportunity to congratulate CUC and to thank Dart Enterprises Real Estate and the Lewis Burger Group for participating in this RFP. For more information on the bid process, including details of the bids and the evaluation report, interested persons should visit ERA website at www.caymanera.ky later this afternoon. I will now pass you back to Mr. Charlie Farrington, MD of the ERA. Thank you. Thank you, Louis. Um, I would like to summarize the process that the ERA has been through to get to this point and make a few comments on the results. First, some background. This 36 megawatt solicitation was mandated by CUC's Transmission and Distribution, or T&D, license signed in 2008. CUC's T&D license requires them to maintain firm generating capacity of between 135% and 155% of peak demand, which currently equates to between 135 megawatts and 155 megawatts of firm generation. This requirement in the license is to ensure they meet reliability expectations. Firm capacity is generation that can be called on to supply power 24-7. 
Every year, CUC is required to forecast demand growth and retirements of existing generators, typically after 25 years of operation, and request the ERA to conduct a solicitation via a certificate of need if new firm capacity is required. This process is expected to take three years from start to commissioning of new generation. CUC requested the solicitation in October 2013, driven primarily by retirements, and it was accepted by the ERA. CUC, sorry, uh, the ERA engaged ICF International, a Washington-based consultant in the energy and utility sector, to assist the ERA in running the solicitation and to conduct the independent evaluation. If there had been no competition, CUC would have been obligated under its license to build the new generation. Note that in this process, competition takes place at the bidding stage and occurs if CUC has to compete against a prospective independent power producer. Consumers get the benefit of competition regardless of who wins, as the bid competition cements in place all of the cost elements with the major exception of future changes to fuel prices, which have to be estimated as part of the evaluation process. The ERA drafted a request for proposal, or RFP, which was considerably more detailed than the previous two RFPs issued by the ERA in 2009 and 2012. This was to ensure that to the greatest extent possible, bidders all presented sufficient data to allow for a fair evaluation based upon the evaluation framework explicitly detailed in the RFP. As with the previous firm capacity RFPs and in accordance with the framework in CUC's T&D license, the RFP stipulated that the bid judge to provide the lowest levelized cost per kilowatt hour would receive 80 points and other bids would receive points scaled down from 80 depending on how their levelized costs compared to the top scoring bid. So if the top scoring bid was 10% cheaper than the second bid, the second bid would receive 80 points less 10% of 80, i.e. an 8-point deduction for a score of 72 points. In addition, bids could receive up to an additional 20 points based on how the bid was assessed on a range of primarily qualitative topics, including one, overall site development, two, environmental impacts, three, fuel and equipment procurement plans, four, finance plans, and five, construction and operation plans. These are called the non-price factors. The RFP, as with previous RFPs, specified that the top scoring bid for combined price and non-price factors scoring would be the preferred bid. The pricing proposal had two major components, capacity charges, which are fixed costs per unit of capacity in kilowatts, and fuel costs, which are variable charges per unit of energy in kilowatt hours. The capacity costs are where the bidder recovers their capital investment, financing costs, plus profit and the fuel costs are determined by the type of fuel, its cost, and the efficiency of the plant at converting the heat content of the fossil fuel, or BTUs, into kilowatt hours of electrical energy. These costs are passed through directly to consumers. The ERA and ICF held a pre-bid meeting for bidders in February to, uh, to explain the RFP and answer potential bidders' questions. There was then a further period until May 12th during which bidders prepared their bids and the ERA answered further bidder questions in writing for all bidders to see. A total of six bids were received, three from CUC, one a diesel bid, uh, one a heavy fuel oil bid, bid or HFO, and the third one was a compressed natural gas or CNG bid. Uh, DECO or DART uh, Enterprises submitted two propane bids and the Lewis Berger Group submitted a single propane bid. Although a preference for a renewable solution was stated in the RFP, no bidders offered such a solution. All bids except HFO were evaluated as meeting threshold requirements set out in the RFP. The solicitation was therefore competitive. CUC subsequently withdrew its CNG bid before it could be fully evaluated and the ERA eliminated CUC's HFO bid 
at the threshold test due to uncertainty as to whether it could be successfully permitted within the time frame allowed by the RFP. The other four bids were fully evaluated and all bids offered 25-year power purchase agreements. ICF did all of the evaluation and prepared the report that you have been given today and which will be published on the ERA's website later this afternoon as mentioned by Louis. ERA staff thoroughly checked all the ICF calculations. Bidders provided capacity charges in a variety of formats. CUC's capacity charges were submitted on a declining amount for each of the 25 years. Lewis Berger Group submitted an amount that was escalated each year in line with Cayman's CPI, or 2% per annum. And DECO submitted a charge that was fixed for the 25-year PPA period, in other words, a level cost. The process that was used to compare the bids was a levelized cost per kilowatt hour. This was computed by first calculating the annual cost for each of the 25 years and then discounting those totals at 10% to a net present value. Then the level cost equivalent for each of the 25 years, again at a 10% interest rate, was calculated. This is akin to calculating a mortgage payment for the net present value of the project. Then based on the annual generation, that is the number of kilowatt hours expected to be generated per year by the proposed plan, the equivalent level amount of each kilowatt hour projected to be sold was calculated to give a common basis for comparing the bids. The amounts of the bids were different enough that it was fairly obvious from a first glance which bid offered the lowest capacity cost. And you can see that for yourself by looking at the bid data summaries at the back of the ICF evaluation report. The fuel costs were determined in a similar manner with ICF determining a fair value for the calorific content of the fuels offered using data from the MIT Energy Club. The fuel conversion efficiencies of the plants were provided by the bidders but validated by ICF generation experts. Future fuel costs were forecasted by ICF fuel experts. ICF forecasted landed diesel to increase by approximately 44% and propane to increase by approximately 37%. What is most important is the relative amount of increase um, between these two fuels. For example, if the forecast had being for an extra 100%, that would have had negligible impact on the result if each fuel had been forecasted to increase by an additional 100%. Despite propane being at source a cheaper fuel than diesel per unit of energy or BTU, transportation costs and the lower efficiency of the propane plants versus the diesel plant combine to eliminate most of propane's advantage. In this regard, it is important to note that approximately one and a half gallons of propane are required to give the same energy as a gallon of diesel. Therefore, significantly more transportation costs are incurred. Additionally, in order to burn the propane, bidders were forced to use smaller reciprocating diesels or alternatively slightly larger gas turbines, both of which are significantly less efficient than the larger medium speed diesel proposed by CUC. As you can see in Exhibit 1 in the ICF report, CUC's bid was significantly more energy conversion efficient than the other bids. For the non-price factors, ICF assigned subject matter experts to the various topics in the evaluation. These experts scored the non-price factors according to the RFP rules. Finally, the price scores and the non-price scores were combined and a clear best bid emerged with the CUC diesel bid scoring 97.86 points and the second best bid from DECO scoring 73.52 points. As mentioned in the ICF report, one thing that stood out in the bids was the significant difference between the capacity charges bid by CUC and those of the other bidders. 
The ERA has verified that CUC bid in accordance with its target cost of capital for 2014 as set out in their license. The other bidders seemingly required a significantly higher return. The ERA expects that there will be significant comment about the continued reliance on diesel as the fuel to provide our electricity and had hoped that one of the cleaner alternatives would have proved uh, attractive. However, given the size of the, the solicitation, this was obviously not possible, as from a cost perspective, CUC's bid outstripped its nearest competitor by 22%. And with that, we'll take your questions. Yes, Ben. Thanks very much. The, um, can you state clearly whether CUC actually did bid on exactly the same terms as the other two, and how much different this bid was from the one that had originally been won by DECO? Um, I can answer the first part of that question affirmatively. CUC bid in exactly the same format as all the other bidders. That's a requirement in the license, so there's no option. And that's the only way that you could make a, uh, a fair comparison is if they bid in the same format. We have not compared it to the, the prior solicitation. We, we did give that some thought, but when we considered that this is a completely different solicitation, both DECO and CUC offered significantly different solutions. The RFPs were significantly different and more detailed. The, the scoring basis was laid out in more detail. And when we considered all those factors, it seemed to us pretty pointless to go back and try and compare results in this uh, evaluation to those in the, in the prior one. one. Just to uh, add something, <clears throat> one of the things we added to this solicitation process was, was a, a, pref a preference for bids that used waste heat and uh, as, as fuel is the largest component of the electricity cost on the island, uh, you can recapture that waste heat and produce additional electricity, which CUC and some of the other bidders provided a, a solution for, and that's one of the other reasons why CUC's proposal was so much more efficient. Yeah, I mean, the other bidders also proposed to recapture uh, waste heat, but that speaks to the difference between this solicitation and the prior solicitation. Yes, Di. All right, sorry, thanks. Um, just sort of housekeeping questions. Uh, how much is the bid worth? When will construction begin? When will, when will generation start? Well, in, in terms of how much is the bid worth, um, you know, we, we didn't really put a figure on that. What we were doing was comparing the cost to consumers of the three different bids. In terms of the, of the capital investment, I think that uh, it's fair to say that it's in the neighborhood of 70 million, depending on exchange rates uh, initially, and then there's probably spending over the next 25 years, which might bring it up in total to around about 100 million. I'm sorry, w what was the other part of your question? Uh, when, when does construction begin and when does generation get started? Yeah, <laughs> um, construction begins ASAP, but it, it's going to take several, several months to, um, obviously, to get equipment on, on island and all that, but the RFP requires uh, generation to begin uh, on half of the uh, generation in May and the second half in June of 2016. Where is it on CUC? It, it's going to be on CU's current site, yes. Okay. CUC's current site. CUC will construct a new building. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they will have a new generation generating house or engine house. I think Carson Fuller, Radio Keyman. Um, I hear you keep talking about competition and how the the customers are getting competition, but for someone on the ground who's looking at their power bill, they might be thinking, well, 
wouldn't it be better if we had two different companies instead of one? If you could just address that for our listeners, that's please. A, uh, yeah, uh, that's a good question. Thank you for that. Because that's why I made that comment that the competition takes place during the bidding process. If you think about it, the way that electricity is generated is you invest a bunch of money in buying a plant, and then you run it for 25 years, and you feed it with fuel, and you convert that heat into electricity, right? Um, that money that you spend up front, that's what is bid. And so if, if a, a bidder has to compete, you know, they are going to try to make that amount as small as possible and, and still win the bid, still meet all the requirements of the bid. So once you select the winning bid, that cost is locked in. And so whether it's an independent power producer the, the cost is not going to change. If it's an independent power producer, they bid X dollars for the capacity. That's what they expect to be paid. It doesn't change for 25 years, other than in accordance with the way they've set out. But that's all that is evaluated. So th that part of the price is determined up front. The other part of the, of the equation that is determined up front is the efficiency. And that, has, that plays into the cost of fuel. So all of that is de determined up front, and that's what prompts you to select a preferred bid. The most efficient solution, the cheapest capacity costs, and the cheapest fuel, taking, the, taking into account how much fuel has to be burned. So regardless of whether it's an IPP or it's CUC, that, that cost is determined at the during the competition, and nothing will change if you have another competitor running. I, I, it's a bit long-winded, but I, I hope I've, you got the picture. And if I could ask another question. The bid was asking for renewable energy sources. You didn't get that. We're doing diesel again. Are you guys going to continue maybe? I know that you, they, they have to ask you again for another bid, so you see has to ask you again. But in the meantime, what are you guys doing to try to clean up the energy situation? Well, they, they have to ask us if it's firm capacity. But we can always um, do an RFP for renewable energy, which is not firm capacity, but is renewable energy, which can displace energy produced by burning diesel. And as long as that cost of that renewable energy compares favorably with the cost of diesel, the consumer is no worse off, but the environment is much better off. So are you planning on doing that? You think you might put well, out Well, bid? at the moment, um, you know, we have the core program, which is adding up to two megawatts of renewable um, capacity or, and, and the energy that that produces. And we have identified that there's at least another 13 megawatts that can be added to the grid safely. We, we, we are looking at the grid to determine if that 13 megawatts can be expanded. How far can it be expanded? What are the implications of storage? Because storage going into the future could be a big um, factor that would allow more renewable energy to be utilized on the grid. So yes. We, we are, that's what the, um, the ERA is now going to turn its attention to that part of our energy equation, looking at renewables. In fact, what the ERA wants to do is to look at, take a holistic view of the whole energy production of the island, looking at the types of fossil fuels we are using. Um, everyone knows that uh, uh, LNG, liquefied natural gas, is much cleaner burning and much cheaper than, than diesel. But it's, it's also very expensive to get. And in fact, that's if you can get it. But you know, that's one possibility that all the Caribbean islands are looking at. But up to now, it hasn't proven successful. I mean, our neighbor Jamaica has been trying to do a 360 megawatt LNG bid now for a number of years unsuccessfully. So we were only doing 36. <laughs> um, so yes, we, that is in the future, and we, but we want to take a holistic view of it to see how we can come up with the optimum mix, not only in the short term, but in the longer term. If, if no one minds, I've, I've got another one. Um, can you explain to the people 
w why it is that this could not be a renewable bid and explain to them the, this idea that this is fixed power that you're looking for and why it is that you feel that renewable energy can't fit that bill and also um, to explain on what basis we think that we need this 36 megawatts. Why 36? Why not 20? Why not 40? Um, on, on what basis has it been drawn up and why it cannot, it could not have been a purely renewable bid and why it had to be what you what you uh, you refer to it as firm the firm that's yeah. it firm and explain to people why you think solar or wind energy is not firm well i'll answer the second part of the question first it's not a matter of what i think i mean obviously solar energy is only available during the day or during when when the sun shines it's if, if it's heavily overcast you're not going to get much energy either so the the firm power uh, requirement. Remember at the beginning of my statement, in the background, I said that CUC is required to maintain 135 to 155 megawatts at current levels of firm power. That's so they can take engines offline to maintain and still meet the demand whenever it happens, whether it's in the middle of the day or it's in the early afternoon. If it happens in the early afternoon and you're relying on renewable, on solar power, you're sunk. So we have to have firm power that's available 24-7 of a certain amount. But if you have the opportunity to, to take in renewable energy, you don't have to run the firm capacity. You can take in the renewable energy as long as it's cheap enough. And one of the reasons for, for the argument for expanding renewable energy is that it, it represents a fixed cost, one that's not going to be escalated by the market over time the way that it's expected that fossil fuels will be escalated. And so whilst it might even be higher today, if you look at it over 25 years, it may be possible to project that, that the cost of that fuel will be lower than the projected cost of a fossil fuel. And there is uh, some element of renewable energy in the CUC uh, uh, solution, and that's the waste heat. I mean, otherwise that, that heat just would have been wasted. Consumers are paying for the fuel, so who owns the heat is always a question that the ERA has asked, asked itself. Now, the, the other way that it may be possible to, to um, make renewable energy firm is if you can store it. So if you could put it in a battery during the day and then it's available at night, that would work. But battery technology is really uh, not there yet in terms of its reliability and its cost. But everyone says it's coming, and I think the future belongs to, to solar energy. Uh, you know, sunlight's going to be the, the, the fuel of the future, but we're, we're, we're not quite there. I mean, if the OTEC uh, plant comes, works, and, you know, is uh, capable of producing power. That's going to be, in effect, solar energy converted to electricity, and it has the potential to be firm because it can run day and night. Uh, photocells cannot run during the night, and that's, that's why they cannot be classed as firm capacity. I, I hope I've made that clear enough. Okay. Could you explain the waste heat thing you're talking about? What exactly is CUC going to be doing? CUC will be, uh, uh, okay, a diesel power plant has about a 50% efficiency. Um, so that's that means that if you put 100% of fuel in, you're going to get 50% of that energy in electricity. Um, if you, if you and, it and the other 50% is heat. So you can recapture that heat uh, and then boil steam, boil water to produce steam, and then run a gas turbine. Uh, a gas turbine efficiency, uh, or s sorry, the waste heat recovery system has an efficiency of approximately 20%. So 20% times 50%, you can, get, you can get up to 10% of additional electricity out of the 36 megawatts. So approximately 3.6 megawatts 
of additional energy out of the diesel, which is almost twice as much as the current core uh, capacity limit. Um, I'm, I'm a little confused about what has happened to the uh, renewable bids that, that the ERA and CUC accepted, you know, what was it, 18 months ago or something? There was a Pittsburgh-based company, and, and NEP was the other one, the Chicago-based company. What's happened to them? Where do they stand these days? Yeah. They, they, unfortunately, have taken a lot longer to come to fruition than we would have liked to have seen. I believe at the moment that one has fallen away completely. And uh, the other one, we are still being promised that we'll get a draft PPA in the near future. Uh, when we get that draft PPA, PPA, that's where the ERA will approve that. I think in the past, it's fair to say that the ERA approved CUC to conduct the solicitation. Mm -hmm. Okay, we, we haven't accepted those bids yet. The ERA has not accepted them. CUC has accepted them, but they, they can't be issued a generating license until the ERA accepts it. So, okay, again, I'm still trying to sort through this. So that means that it was NEP, and I can't remember the... the, the NGP. NGP. NGP and IEP, N I think. Uh, that's it. Uh, mm -hmm. So CUC accepted their bids and said, okay, let's go ahead, but the ERA never got to that point. Is that what, is no, that the, what you're the, saying? The process is that CUC picked those as the two best bids that they received, but then they had to negotiate with those companies to come up with a, a power purchase agreement. And then the process is that once they've agreed on the terms, they have to submit that to the ERA. We have to review it and accept it because we're the ones, uh, you know, accept that cost is going to be a pass through to consumers. So, that, so the ERA is there to protect the consumers to make sure that cost is not going to be too high. We then accept, if we find it acceptable, we would accept the PPA and, and then issue a generating license to the renewable uh, generator. That's the process. Right, and, and not to be redundant, but then go on what happened uh, after CUC negotiated those PPAs. It came to you and you're still looking at them? No, we, it hasn't come to us yet. It hasn't even come to you yet? No, it hasn't come to us yet. Boy, it's been a long time. Long time. Which is the company that's gone away entirely? You know, I, I'm not too sure that the names are so similar, I don't want to uh, get oh, it was wrong. Was it the Pittsburgh or the Chicago guys? Yeah, I'm not sure. But that does, you know, the, the length of time that it is taken is concerning. But something's going to come to a head pretty soon because, you know, we have been focused on this competitive solicitation for the last year, but now we are going to turn our focus to, uh, to renewable energy. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.